Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, December 12th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, a ranting racist DHS worker finally gets the boot. Then, ESPN considers taking Christ out of Christmas. And should a convicted sex offender receive his severance package? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Simpering control freaks and big nerd packs taking everything over, ruling everything, becoming police officers with weapons, tasering us. Well, it appears the feds are really bad at doing some things like creating websites and handling taxpayers' money. That's why this ridiculously inept $600 million website is being investigated. But now they're on to something that they're really good at, cover-ups. And Representative Daryl Issa, who is chair of the House Oversight Committee, has accused the Health and Human Services of criminal obstruction of justice in a letter written late Wednesday. He said the documents requested pertain to companies hired by HHS to build and operate healthcare.gov. The department subsequently instructed those companies not to comply with the committee's request. The department's hostility towards questions from Congress and the media about the implementation of Obamacare is well known. The department's most recent effort to stonewall, however, has morphed from mere obstinacy into criminal obstruction of a congressional investigation. Well, it turns out that the feds are also very good at something else, and that's propaganda. And of course, they're using ESPN to propagandize people about Obamacare. But you better not try to run an ad that mentions the name of Jesus or God, not at ESPN. Now, remember that this is a Christmas ad for a Catholic children's hospital. And this kind of censorship is really only strange if you don't understand the real role of the professional sports leagues and the professional sports media in pushing the federal government's social engineering. We've seen this before, as Alex pointed out last week in the Daniel Defense ad being banned from the NFL, because quite frankly, it showed a man taking his rightful responsibility in protecting his family with a firearm. Nothing at all offensive about it, unless, of course, you're pushing the government's anti-family, anti-Christian, anti-gun agenda then it's very offensive and it gets censored. Now, so as we've seen with this ESPN story, your boycott can have an effect. Or you can just go along and get fleeced by the NFL like the camp followers. We see that from the LA Times, the top, top ticket prices this year are going to be over $2,600 to get into the Super Bowl. And Adon Salazar points out in InfoWars what you can expect for that kind of money. He says the NYPD is going to roll out a police state for the Super Bowl. He says you're going to have Fans that will be under suspicion by armed officers with heavy weapons. They're going to be deploying even gunboats. Heavily visible, they refer to it. Hercules foot patrols. You can get sniffed by their dogs. You can get prohibited from walking to the game. You can also buy a $51 shuttle ticket if you want. And, of course, they're going to prohibit you from tailgating, probably prohibit you from carrying any totes. But, you know, for $2,600, you can get the full paranoid experience of the police state. And that's what you're going to get at the Super Bowl. Or you can just refuse to support this stuff and boycott this trash. Now, never underestimate how fanatic a sports fan can be. We saw one month ago a teacher punching a 12-year-old because he criticized his NFL team. Now, that teacher was fired immediately, but no criminal charges were brought against him for some time. Now we understand that criminal charges are being pursued against him. But look at this story that broke today. This is... Parents who are stunned that the union is seeking a $10,000 severance for their son who was molested sexually by that teacher. But the union is pushing back on this. The Michigan Education Association is going to arbitration to try to force the West Branch Rose City School District to pay a former teacher convicted of molesting a student a $10,000 severance buyout. They pled guilty to first-degree sexual misconduct. He was arrested and charged with sexual conduct in 2012. And what we see from this is that teachers unions, like police unions, even though they were brought in to help people, keep them from getting exploited, now what they're doing is they're defending criminals. We see this happening over and over again with the police. We see it now happening with teachers, that even when they behave criminally, even if they are fired, they're still coming back and getting massive pensions, massive compensation for these people who were fired for criminal acts. Now, look at how long it took for this Homeland Security employee to be fired. Four months. In an article by Paul Joseph Watson, Homeland Security employee who called for mass murder of whites is finally fired. A Homeland Security employee who called for the mass murder of white people has finally been fired over four months after it first emerged that he was running a website which advocated a genocidal race war. 
And it was reported that everybody in the office was afraid of him, and they were worried that he would come in with a gun someday and go postal, you know, that other federal agency besides Homeland. And he had been making $115,000 a year. This is a position that he'd had since 2009. And Paul Joseph Watson points out in his commentary here, he says, it's ironic that while the Department of Homeland Security circulates training guidelines and material that instruct their employees to treat liberty lovers and constitutionalists as terrorists, actual domestic extremists can stay in their jobs at the agency for years while publicly spewing violent racial hatred. And so the question is, do they really not know who this guy is? Are they really that incompetent or are they okay with it? Take a look at who Barack Obama has just hired. Kurt Nemo points out that Obama has nominated an Israeli bankster as a Federal Reserve vice chair. Yeah, they're playing musical chairs in the kingdom of the banksters. He says, Zambian American Israeli economist Stanley Fisher left Citibank to head up Israel's central bank. So this is a guy who's the former head of the Israeli central bank, also the former uh, also part of the IMF and a chief economist at the World Bank. And now he's going to be the vice chair at the Federal Reserve. But listen to his comment about this. He says, without the Fed, this is what, the, what Stanley Fisher said, without the Fed, we'd have had a much deeper recession. Without the extraordinary things that the Fed has done, the economy would be in much worse shape today. And we need to remember that. Well, let's remember that the Fed, through inflation, has destroyed 99% of the value of the dollar over the last 100 years, most of that happening in just the last few decades. Let's also remember that even though the Fed was brought in to stop the business cycle, we had the Great Depression after the Fed was brought in. Nothing that they did before, during, or after the Great Depression helped that, and nothing that they have done during this economic times has helped us either. Now, speaking of questionable hires, we see somebody at the Mandela funeral that was translating for the funeral in sign language. And we're going to have Leanne McAdoo interview a deaf educator. And we're going to ask him questions like, how did this guy get there? <laughs> what, what does it take to be an interpreter, a deaf interpreter at an event like this? So stay tuned. That'll be our interview for today. We'll be right back after this short break. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Well, welcome back. 
Now, if you believe that there's global warming and that you have to save the earth from what man is doing, you have to accept a couple of things. Number one, you have to accept that man-made global warming and the production of CO2 is the predominant factor on climate change. Then you also have to accept the fact that even though climate change models predicted that we would have global warming if CO2 went up, that hasn't happened. CO2 has gone up and for 17 years, temperatures have gone down. Therefore, their model is, as we say in the computer business, garbage in, garbage out. Now, Stephen Colbert had a climatologist, David Keith, on his show, and they talked about climate engineering. And this is very interesting because they hit on chemtrails and they also hit on the fact that this is something that has been talked about for quite some time about by scientists. The worst way to make decisions about this would be if we all agree that we won't talk about it in polite society, we suppress it, which is basically what had been happening. Mm -hmm. Maybe My it's happening is, already. You ever look at those planes up there? They have contrails behind them. <laughs> maybe all those planes are the contrails. Maybe they're actually spraying chemicals into the atmosphere right now, and Uncle Sam isn't telling us. It seems extremely unlikely. The that fact the United the States is not telling something to its citizens, that seems extremely <laughs> likely to me. Read the newspaper. Now, in that clip, David Keith said the worst thing that would happen would be if scientists would agree that they were going to suppress information about climate change. And that's exactly what they have been doing. Listen to what he said earlier in the interview. He said, this is actually an old idea, climate engineering, known since President Johnson and the scientific community mostly decided not to talk about it. Well, that's what we've been telling you for quite some time. Well, that's what we've been telling you, that this has been going on since the Vietnam War. And this kind of follows the same pattern that we've seen with the NSA. They do this all the time. First of all, they ridicule the idea as being totally impossible. Then they come in with step two and they say, well, technically it's feasible, but we're not doing it. We would never do it. Then they come in with phase three, which says, yeah, we've been doing it all along and there's nothing you can do about it. And of course, it's for your safety anyway. So that's what we kind of see rolling out here. It's an amazing interview. Take a look at it. Go to Infowars.com, read the article and watch the full clip. Very interesting. And another story from Infowars.com and Washington blog is, is the American dream dead? American dream RIP. As Bloomberg reports, the American people know what's going on. The widening gap between rich and poor is eroding faith in the American dream by almost two to one, 64% to 33%. Most Americans say they no longer have an equal chance to get ahead. And this is the interesting thing. This is not just amongst the poor. Those making less than 50000 a year by 73% to 24% margin say the economy is unfair, but even 60% of those whose annual income is 100000 or more feel that way. What we see increasingly is that the middle class is being pitted against the poor, but they understand now, they're starting to understand that actually it's a transfer of wealth, not from the middle class to the poor, but from both the middle class and the poor to the 1%. We see that increasingly. It was back in the Depression that we were promised prosperity as a sign of a chicken in every pot. But we've seen a lot of things happening to the quality of our food as big agribusiness comes in. We've seen that we have, uh, first of all, Tyson Chicken back in the Clinton days was able to get the FDA to redefine what frozen and fresh chicken was. And now we see that something is up with China. And John Bound has a report on that. It's what's for dinner. An estimated $70 billion per year is spent by poultry feasting consumers in the United States. In August of this year, Obama caved into China and the beef industry's demands to process our homegrown chickens in China. That's right. Our chickens will be shipped to China to be processed and then sent right back to us to consume. U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer paraphrased a USDA report indicating that China will likely be allowed to directly import their own chickens into this country. So, you'll be glad to know there are new food labeling regulations, and I think you'll find them very, well, cool. Cool is a U.S. Department of Agriculture program that requires most full-line grocery stores, club and warehouse stores, to provide consumers information about where certain foods come from. What about products like this? It lists three countries of origin. This means that either the meat used originated in different countries, or the animals were born and raised in one country, say Canada or Mexico, and then slaughtered in the United States. And when that is fully underway, we can expect tens of thousands of U.S. jobs destroyed as they are shipped over to a country that passed off rat meat as lamb. But it's not just chicken. In September of 2013, NBC reported that shareholders of Smithfield Foods, 
approved a plan to sell the world's largest pork producer and processor to a Chinese company. The U.S. already imports 4 billion pounds of food per year from China. Suddenly raising backyard chickens doesn't sound like such a bad idea until they make that illegal too. For Infowars.com, John Bound reporting. Well, that's it for our news tonight. Now, if you're not a Prison Planet TV subscriber, now is a great time. We have a Christmas special where you can get five months free with an annual subscription. It's a way to support our operation. All of our documentaries, all of Alex Jones's documentaries are there, as well as the nightly news program. Well, right after the break, Leanne McAdoo is going to interview Paul Simmons. He's a sign language expert, a deaf educator, and a former South African activist. And he's going to be talking about the fiasco at the Mandela funeral. Stay tuned. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember... The revolution against tyranny is growing. Well, the world watched as South Africa mourned the death of their former president, Nelson Mandela, on Tuesday. But some deaf viewers were surprised to see when the interpreter that was there was doing nothing more than swatting flies from away from his face. Well, today I'm going to be joined by... Paul Simmons, he has a master's degree in deaf education from McDaniel College. He was a deaf activist in South Africa. He also taught for a time at a college there, and he also inspired the deaf community in South Africa as well. And he is here today to give us his take on the misinterpretation during that ceremony. So, Paul, you were tuned in watching the ceremony with the rest of the world. What was going through your mind as you were watching the interpreter? Well, when I was first informed by a friend that they sent me a message saying, is this South African sign language? Because I can't understand it. I didn't think much of it initially because I thought that was a good explanation. There are some much better interpreters than others. And I was at, work, at home and doing some work at the time. And then later when I looked into it and I saw the, the so-called sign language, it immediately struck me that it followed no rule of sign language at all. And in fact, I contacted a friend in South Africa and many of my friends there responded similarly that they couldn't understand it at all. 
And that was the very beginning of the controversy. And I'm, you know, it wasn't really interpreting at all. And so as you were watching, and you were, you're able to see that he wasn't signing in Zulu as what they were first reporting. And what was he speaking any words that were coherent or actual real words? No, not <laughs> at all. And to say that he was signing in Zulu sign language is not true at all. Mm. That there is only South African sign language. Mm. And there are, however, many different variations, many dialects. But Zulu sign language, no, not at all. And there was also a female interpreter. Uh, was she using an international sign language? Uh, she was definitely, her, her version of, of interpretation was much different than his, obviously. <laughs> The female interpreter that you saw just so happens to be a good friend of mine, and she signed South African Sign Language in her work. And indeed, South African Sign Language is very different than Irish Sign Language or British Sign Language or American Sign Language. Each has its own signs and there are, however, often grammatical rules that are similar across languages, but the languages are certainly not the same. This is true of any language, any spoken language that we see. There are some similarities to be found between languages, but they're not the same language at all. And so one of the controversies with his signing was that the crowd in the audience clearly booed the president there. So how important is it to, to make that gesture that the crowd was booing, and why do you think that he kind of withheld that? <laughs> well, he didn't know how to say it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it may be that the interpreter wasn't sure if the president was being booed or he himself. <laughs> well, apparently this this man had signed before. He had signed on behalf of the president before as well. So, how how does how did he even get in there? How do, twice. <laughs> Actually, there. This was the fourth. Mm, wow. The fourth time. Now, that the fourth that I know of. And so it seems like, you know, you have to have a great deal of understanding to be able to be an interpreter at such a huge international event. How, how does someone actually get a position like that? Well, this actually brings up the, a great question because we have so many outstanding interpreters in South Africa, highly qualified interpreters with wonderful skills. So why he was chosen, I have no idea. Uh, I believe that people had already complained about this interpreter in the past but no action was taken. And I, from, from our understanding here in America, obviously if someone had been in a mental institution or they were clearly taking medication for schizophrenia or something as this man claims to, to be, he wouldn't be nowhere, nowhere near the president, let alone three feet from hundreds of very important people at such an important event like this. Is, is there a, maybe a difference there in South Africa where they maybe don't see that as such a problem and they kind of gave him a pass? No, 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 not at all. So the problem though is that we don't have standards set yet. Now I'm not sure if 
there is a certification process at all currently, but I know that when I was in Africa, in South Africa, three years ago, they were in the process of developing standards mm. that was in, in the process of being worked on to develop interpreting standards. Ah. And then, so what's been the reaction by the South African and the international signing community to, to for one, for him being there, but then as far as now what he's come out to say was the reason why? The community is very upset. Mm. And I've had an interesting conversation with one of my academic colleagues recently because we couldn't really agree on whether this should be called language apartheid or communication apartheid. Mm. And we've actually had quite a discussion about it for some time and because there is a controversy out there about whether this is more of a communication apartheid or language apartheid. And in discussion, we've actually come to an agreement that or my colleague and I agreed that this is more a case of communication apartheid. And can you explain that? Sure. I say that because communication apartheid happens when one language is ignored in favor of another. Mm. So, given that interpreters were provided, you could say, but so they, they can make the claim that they're not ignoring sign language, but that interpreter couldn't sign at all. So that is really a case of communication apart time. And so do in you- In fact, I'm quite aware that in South Africa, the uh, South Africa uh, as a whole has ratified the UN convention and the CRPD, it's called, and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This was ratified in 2007. In fact, South Africa was one of the first countries to ratify. Hmm. So, Article 21 of that convention speaks to access of information. And so, is this... what? With this ratification, is this something that the signing community should work towards these standards so that these kind of world events can be understood by those who watch? Yes, that's correct. But what's happened here is they've hired the wrong person, and this is because there was no involvement of the deaf community or the signing community in the selection. Right. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to add, Paul, that we can all kind of think about with this situation? For a very long time, a great deal of time, sign language has been considered a pariah. So it's been seen as a less sophisticated language looked down upon by others and so only very recently in history have we seen it uh, uh you know we've seen the advent of baby sign mm -hmm. you know and so all of a sudden people see this as a wonderful tool a positive reinforcement for infants who are hearing now however we still don't see uh, uh, the, the, we still, it's seen that sign language is bad to expose to deaf babies in people's minds. Hmm. That's interesting. So, so this shows that sign language, we have seen from research, we, we know that the use of sign language increases esteem and connection between uh, the infant and parent well before the infant can speak in hearing children. Hmm. So it's actually much more sophisticated. <laughs> yes, so now for deaf infants, however, 
Mm. But by and large, they're told, no, 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 no. If deaf infants sign, then they'll ignore speech. They won't speak. And this is, in fact, a, a huge issue because by taking away signed language from deaf people, deaf people raised this way often have greater difficulty with literacy, often have more emotional difficulties, and so forth. So this is why I say that signed language is a human right. It's a human right. Mm. And that should be recognized Absolutely. and allowed to happen. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for giving us your time. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to InfoWars Nightly News this evening. Join us here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.